So, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Audrey and uh, I'm very happy to welcome you today. I am the admissions manager for the Master in Finance program, uh, which you are interested to if you are uh, attending this webinar today. So, uh, we have with us the MSc in Finance program director, Dr. Gregory Moscato. And Gregory, Hello guys. I'm going to introduce all the contents, uh, all the academics of the, of the program. Uh, also with us today, uh, Ms. Eva Mizrahi, we one of our students in the MSc in Finance. Hello, everyone. And later during the presentation, this is uh, Marine Janini, who is um, actually working in the Department of Career uh, Services, will join us so that she will give you insight about what's going to happen from a career's point of view during your program and also after, uh, which is a very important point. So uh, let's not wait anymore. Grégory, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, Audrey. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be uh, with you all for this uh, uh, special online open day where we are going to take some time to discover and discuss uh, the specificity, specificities of our Masters in Finance program. Now, before we jump into uh, what I would say the actual um, characteristics of the program, I'd like to start with um, a step back, you know, for you to really think about, well, why should you do a master's in finance to begin with? Uh, what should you find in a master's in finance? And um, I guess to, to really think about um, how you integrate your master with your professional objectives. So, okay, this is a very nice picture of Monaco. For those who've been in, Mar in Monaco, you probably recognize it for everybody else. Well, this is the uh, campus that awaits you. Uh, coming back to my uh, very first question, why should we even consider doing a master's in finance? Probably I would contend that the first reason uh, is definitely that uh, this is a very demanding industry. It's an industry with high expectations, very often quite a lot of pressure on it, and there are very specific requirements to join that industry. First, there's a clear uh, knowledge expectations, you know, the technical knowledge, uh, the vocabulary, the financial vocabulary, uh, and the mechanisms that surround most financial instruments are a key component and a master's in finance, I would say one of the primary objectives of any good master's in finance should be to provide you with that technical knowledge. In addition to providing you with this exposure to, to, that, to that technical knowledge, uh, of course, a key characteristics that is definitely thought after by, I would say, top players is your ability to think about what you're doing and to think about the market and to think about financial data. So your critical thinking is absolutely essential. It's less about being able to compute something. It's less about uh, your ability to source data. It's really about your ability to make sense out of that data because at some point you'll have uh, to provide some recommendation with that data. But of course, these two dimensions are very, very much, much linked to the same, I would say, um, technical component, right? And your ability to think about that. Uh, on top of that, that, this is also an industry that has um, very strict, I would say, um, behavioral uh, expectations. Um, being in the way they dress, being in the way uh, they expect people to behave once they join firms. Um, and a good master should also help you acquire those um, codes, you know, that, that is expected. Um, last but not least, uh, among the, uh, what I would say, the, the top requirements from, from the industry is your ability to communicate. Now, you have to realize in finance, you know, Alone. And if you don't work alone, if you work in teams, if you work with clients, if you work with managers and other uh, analysts, uh, then by definition, your ability to communicate is key. So 
in a nutshell, I would say that those four dimension, any f masters in finance should con you should consider must have those elements, right? It's element, it's essential. Now, on top of that, there is a, a, a very different perspective you should take when approaching the masters in finance. First, this is a, um, an industry that brings people from everywhere and different walk of lives and really requires so many different types of uh, skill sets, right? Um, and the reason is because the industry is rather broad. Uh, you can consider some uh, careers in a more client-oriented components, so client relationship, advisory, uh, private banking. Uh, you could also be much more focused on the analysis part, uh, either within asset management companies, investment banks, um, other type of funds and alternative funds, and portfolio management as well or be more on the action side with the trading, uh, or you could be more uh, focused on deal making. Uh, so the M&A, private equity, venture capital, real estate even, if we, if we go about that. And you have even, you know, on the very extreme spectrum, what I would call uh, the techie side, you know, the pure programming, the uh, financial modeling, uh, with high math, high, um, and not everything is for everyone, but they do need everyone. They, all those sides are present in the industry. And therefore doing a master's in finance is about discovering all those sides, uh, finding the one that is right for you and, um, you know, going for it and, you know, then choosing specializations, choosing elective courses, whatever is the right fit for the next step in line of your own characteristics and your, your desires for, for, the, for the, your future career. Um, now, in addition to the fact that this industry is very large, maybe, and I should say maybe, probably a third large reason why you should consider doing a master's degree, and a particular master's degree in finance, is about the network. Um, we can say that technical knowledge is fundamental, critical thinking, communication, your understanding of the industry is fundamental, but on top of it, having a good network, being able to uh, be exposed to a variety of players is a great way for you to identify first who's doing what, uh, what is the right fit for you, and therefore, um, improves your ability to um, make better decisions for your future career. So let's see, you know, that's what a master's in finance should do, right? Uh, so let's see what we do at IOM. Now, the program itself is a rather intensive 60 months program with 10 months of uh, a dedicated to courses. And those courses are, uh, you know, taught by a combination of top academic professors, so PhDs doing research in the field they teach. And we combine that with professors who are top professionals in the field, professionals that also have an extensive experience, pedagogical experience as well. So we try to combine that to bring, uh, I would say, um, the best of the two worlds. Uh, in a single program. In addition, we engage into um, a number of activities. Uh, and in particular, uh, um, for example, I, I mentioned this one, and, um, and Eva will be able to, to talk to you about it in maybe just a second. But for example, we um, have our students participate to the CFA Research Challenge Competition, which is a, a competition that pits uh, teams from different schools, actually more than 1,000 schools worldwide participate to that competition. It's super competitive. Um, it's a real challenge for the, the teams who, who are engaged in that, but that's also uh, a fantastic way to apply knowledge. Maybe Eva, could you, in a nutshell, because you participated uh, last year, could, could you just in a nutshell say, what was your experience? What, what did you do concretely? And, you know. 
Hello. Does it make any sense? <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm Eva and uh, I'm currently finishing my uh, master's in finance here at IUM by doing my internship right now. But uh, as Dr. Moscato just mentioned, I had the opportunity to participate in the CFA Research Challenge last year, where my team and I ended up second on the, the France level, which was very exciting. And uh, I highly advise for those who do a master's in finance, in particular at IUM, if you have the opportunity to do this challenge, it's a very very good opportunity to take because on top of everything you learn at university you really get to test all those concepts by applying them to a real life case and you also see what it takes to really work in the financial industry by uh, doing a real investment case and it's really a human experience because you get to be immersed in a very team spirit environment it's very intense so you really get disciplined by knowing to see what hard work means and uh, you also get a very good network because you get to meet different uh, people of the industry, whether it's uh, contestants from other school, but also professionals on the industry, if you make it to uh, the finals. But uh, for me, it was a very good opportunity, not only because we went far, but uh, I learned many, many things in terms of uh, personal experience, but also for financial technical skills. So it's very good. <laughs> All right, thanks Eva for, for this uh, perspective. Um, coming back so to the characteristics of, of the program, um, in general, it's a rather international masters in finance, um, 15 plus nationalities. Um, we integrate about 30 students uh, this year, a bit more, but you know, we, we aim for that 25 to, to 35 uh, our number is uh, where our sweet spot is. And they really come from everywhere. Um, there's, I don't think there's any continent that is not represented this year. Uh, so it's, it's a very nice way. And even, even though there's a lot of Europeans at a large sense, uh, we have really a good mix. Uh, Northern Europeans, South Europe from South. And so you really have a, a very nice mix of people. Um, on top of that, we also have and an benefits from um, local partners. Um, you have here a, a few names like Barclays, CMB, and Mono Shield. Um, and we work closely with them, not just to fine tune our programs and to try to every year improve that program, uh, but we also have, and I'll come back to that in just a, a second, dedicated events with them. On top of it, we also have um, uh, another partner, which is INSEC, our parents, uh, university and we benefit from their campuses in London so part of the program at the very end of the 10 months of academic months finish in London and um, uh, which allows us again to to get a different exposure to our students and get give them an exposure to the financial markets out there um, on top of that we would call the academic and the more professional side you do have uh, extra uh, elements, including career services uh, and networking. So the career services, they do a variety of things, including, um, uh, well, um, bringing your know, companies to IOM, uh, helping you to fine tune both your CVs, helping you also better understanding the current dynamics of the financial industry, from the hiring perspective, you know, who is hiring whom, uh, what skills are thought after, what um, what players uh, and what specific positions are being offered. Uh, so it's um, it's really a, a great um, um, a great experience from that perspective. Even though I would say we are on top of when say what you would find in many other uh, maybe other masters in finance out there, uh, we are also benefiting from a, a bit of a unique uh, network uh, here in Monaco. Now I'm going to come back to it in in a, just a few seconds, uh, talking about the network itself and why it is a bit different than what you would typically find in other universities. But before that, I wanted to show you a bit the structure of the program itself. So as you can see here, the, the program outline, the program is 
having essentially a core um, core track, you could call it almost, uh, which is common to all finance students. Now that common track is only finance courses, of course, uh, but it will represent the backbone of what we think represent the must have for any uh, students, you know, graduating from a, from a master's in finance. Now, this includes, you know, courses like accounting, stock and bond valuation, portfolio theory and management, risk management, uh, derivatives, investment banking, for example. Uh, now, on top of those core courses shared by everyone, then of course you get to decide from January on um, a specialized track. That specialized track allows you then to focus a bit more uh, towards, um, I would say, sub uh, parts of the industry. So you could uh, decide to focus a bit more on the private banking and the more wealth management dimensions of the financial industry, which as you can see on the right end, allows you to uh, access uh, positions in private banks, family offices, but also uh, to a certain extent also allows you to, to join asset management companies. You could also instead focus more on um, the alternative asset management side of it. So namely hedge funds and private equity. And even within the hedge fund and private equity track, you could bring a bit more emphasis on the hedge fund side with hedge fund management and hedge fund strategies, or you could give a bit more emphasis on the deal making side. So focusing with private equity, uh, mergers and acquisition, venture capital, real estate. Uh, and then as you can see, uh, we have that London track I've mentioned, uh, which happening is happening every year, uh, end of June. And then uh, of course, uh, from, Jul uh, from July to December, you have your capstone, a lot of students like to uh, take an internship. Uh, making an internship here can be both made in Monaco and outside of Monaco. Um, typically, Monaco presents a, a rather um, advantageous uh, a market, a very ready market, a market we know quite well. So, uh, to sort of um, summarize in a nutshell, some of the, what I would call at least, some of the key differentiators, uh, differentiating factors that you will find in the Masters in Finance uh, at IOM, probably the number one is that you're in Monaco. And you may say, well, so what? You know, I'm in Monaco, I could be in Paris, I could be in I don't know, London, I could be Frankfurt. Um, you have to realize that Monaco is a very unusual marketplace from uh, one perspective. It's very small, two square kilometers, but on two square kilometers, you have more than 3,000 finance and banking professionals. That's a lot of professionals per square kilometer. And the good news is we are in touch with all of them because we do professional certifications for them. And we are in touch with absolutely every single regulated financial institution in Monaco. And of course that helps us to understand their needs better, to have specific connections and therefore for them, when they are looking for um, new hires, when they are looking for interns, uh, they tend to uh, come to us um, in priority. And um, it allows us therefore to um, really give a multi-experience to our students about the financial industry. So throughout the year, through a, a number of events, maybe when um, uh, Marine Janini, when she will join us, uh, she may be able to develop a bit some of also what the career department is setting up and the type of events that they are doing for that. Um, but in addition to some of those events where they bring in the players at IOM, where we go to conferences, or we, we have a specific, um, I would say unique to um, a single institution events, such as the Barclays days, where we spend an entire day at Barclays, meeting uh, both their teams, um, meeting some of their analysts, <coughs> management, 
directors. Sometimes we meet some clients as well. And then we engage into training games. I mean, you know, full days where uh, you are plunged into a, what I would call a non-academic uh, setting, um, which allows you also to, to develop a, a better feel uh, for, for um, a specific player or for the industry more at large. And then, of course, you know, we have some networking cocktails. With COVID, I must say, we have much, much fewer of those cocktails. Uh, but hopefully, you know, by the time you guys join, we will be back, we'll be back to a more balanced situation where we can fully enjoy every dimension of this experience. I see Audrey is back visually. Maybe I could uh, leave you the, the, the floor to, to Audrey and just uh, to, to, to add some, uh, some elements uh, for, the, uh, for the admission spots. Yes, of course. Uh, if you can move to the, to the following uh, slide, Gregory, um, you can see my contact details uh, so that we can share with all the participants. So thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. Um, a few words about admissions. So um, as I said earlier, I'm in charge of the Master in Finance especially. So you can find here my contact details, my email address and phone number. So you can contact me anytime for any question you may have regarding the, the program. Um, very shortly, very quickly, a few words about the admission process. So everything happens online. So the first thing that you need to do is get connected on monaco.edu and give your basic information like your name, address, um, this kind of, of info. And then you need to upload different documents. So obviously we will um, need from you your transcripts and your diploma if you already have it. Many of you, of course, don't have it for the time being because it's a bit too early. So we will be able to take decision based on your transcripts until now. We will also need to get your CV because it's important to get a glimpse of your uh, potential professional experience. Um, and we will need to get a proof of English proficiency because as you can see, well, all the program is in English and it's important for you to have a good level. Also here, if you don't have it by the time of application, this is not a problem because you can provide it later uh, before you start the program. Uh, so when we have the documents uploaded, then uh, I organize your interview with Dr. Moscato, uh, which is usually a Skype or a Teams interview, and you will have some questions to answer before the interview, uh, like by written uh, regarding uh, why you decided to go for the finance program, why IUM, um, to explain a bit what are your expectations and why you, you would like to, to join the uh, IUM. So um, again, Please take good note of my contact details and uh, feel free to, to get back to me for any info. And now I will leave the floor to uh, Mrs. Marine Giannini, who have joined us. Uh, as I said earlier, Marine is in charge of um, the uh, careers department, so she will be able to, tell, to give you more information about your internships and about professional uh, outcomes that you can get after the, the Master in Finance. So Marine, the floor is yours. Thank you, Audrey. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marine Janini, the internship coordinator, more specifically at IUM. And my job is to be the bridge between students and companies and making sure that everybody gets connected and uh, together and mingle and uh, that potentially your students find an internship and then companies find their perfect intern, which might be you. So let's look at what we do to help you guys out finding an internship or finding a job. Um, if we move on to the next slide, thank you very much. So you see that we have different levels of services that we provide depending on which program uh, you're, um, you're attending. So of course, on a master level, you get everything from the bachelor level plus additional services. You get individual career counseling session with either me or Sophie De Lorenzo. We sit down with students, we review CV, cover letter, uh, LinkedIn profile, internship search strategy, doubts that you may have, follow-ups and etc. Anything that you need to discuss with us, we're here to help you out and have individual uh, sessions with you, which we do either physically at IUM or through Teams, Skype, Zoom, uh, whatever you can think of. Any way we need, uh, our students need us, we're there. Um, we do in-class career seminars as well during the year. 
Um, Sophie and myself cover mainly the Monaco job market and give you an, a, a flavor of what the year will be with us. But you have also a dedicated career coach from the industry, uh, Jonathan Rose, uh, who is actually a headhunter in finance and helps you draft a concrete CV, cover letter, LinkedIn profile, really tailor-made for finance to help you maximize your chances of landing your perfect internship or your perfect job, okay? Um, we help you define your uh, career goal objectives uh, so that any experience that goes on your CV has a meaningful, um, is meaningful for your future career. And of course, we define with you your self-setting techniques. We'll help you uh, de develop an elevator pitch. And you have, among other things, we also uh, do a profile book of the class. So short cards, uh, basically resuming who you are, kind of a, like an elevator pitch, but this type of document is then sent to all the partner companies that we work with and they request it very early on so that they can do kind of their shopping and uh, call on the, the very best ones from the beginning to, to get them for an internship. Um, we do organize the International Business Days, a three days event where we invite over 60 companies to come and present themselves and recruit and explain what are the tendencies of the industry, what are the skills in demand. What is interesting with this event is that you get to shape your own program depending on what you are interested in. So there are conferences, there's workshops where you get to learn, for example, uh, how to have a strong LinkedIn, how to create a video CV, these type of things. And then we have speak this dating sessions, so short 10 minutes interviews with companies and on-campus recruitment sessions with companies were really coming on campus to recruit for internship positions. Now go back, thank you. <laughs> you, um, you don't have business consulting projects uh, for the master in finance because you already have a lot of work to do. Uh, but you do have a, a day at Barclays uh, where you get to uh, have a, a simulation of investments, this kind of things. You get to mingle more in particular with them. Um, this year, I'm not sure it will be Barclays, it might be CMB, but we are still holding this kind of, a, this kind of, a, of a activity uh, for the Masters in Finance. Um, you also have a course called Networking Techniques. So networking is super important, and especially if you want to work in Monaco. So that's why we're teaching you how to network, how to create an effective network that then you get to implement within a networking cocktail that we organize every year in January uh, to present you guys to the, the business community of Monaco as well as our alumni who are, uh, sometimes they are recruiters as well. Um, to fin finalize a bit what we do for you guys as well, there are business conferences organized once a month. We have a, a finance society which has a, been launched this year, uh, so a finance club basically where they come in, they get speakers, they do uh, um, investment simulations, uh, many, many different activities. And, uh, and I send a job listing once a week as well with all the internship offers that I receive from our, the, the businesses we're in a partnership with. Um, now we can move on to the next slide, talking about internship employers. So just to give you a flavor, who are the employers from uh, our inter from um, uh, from the well, whatever. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so you see, there's many different names. This was 2019, 2020. I don't have the full data yet, so I don't want to give statistics which are incomplete. And I'm sure Dr. Mascato would agree with me on this one. Um, but as you can see, many different names, Julius Baer, um, you have uh, in finance, but not only, you will see BNP Paribas, Société Générale, uh, UBS, Moore Stevens, just a few. To be honest, most of our students in the master in finance uh, stay in Monaco uh, to do an internship, but not only. Uh, we, we try more and more to push them abroad as well. So among other countries which are targeted this year, particularly we fed in Luxembourg, uh, some in London, some are in Paris, uh, some are in Germany, so, and some in Switzerland as well. So see, these are some of the other countries which has been targeted this year uh, by the students who are currently doing their, uh, their internships. Um, 
So as I said, 61% of our students usually stay in Monaco. This, this is a general stat for all the master students. For the master in finance students, I would say it's more like 85, 90% staying in Monaco for the internship. Now talking about graduating and once you become an alumni for the program, for the class of 2019, I don't have the figures for 2020 because we're currently working on them. But for the stats for 2019, the moment we physically gave the diploma to our students back in uh, June 2019, 86% of them had secured a position, uh, a full-time position uh, at graduation. And 60% of them stayed in Monaco. So that's, um, that's quite huge because Monaco is a very protectionist work environment meaning that there is a priority system in place, which does not apply to internships. As long as you're under 27 years old for internships, whatever is your nationality, you will be allowed to do an internship in Monaco. Securing a full-time position might be a bit more difficult or a bit more, uh, a tiny bit more long in terms of process, but uh, no worries. As you can see, uh, a lot of our students stay uh, after to, to continue their career in Monaco. Um, and some of the employers. So as you can see, most of the employer, the, the full-time employers are actually the same as the internship employers. Most of them actually uh, turn their internship into full-time positions. So you will see BNP Paribas, Ernst & Young, GFG, uh, which is located in Monaco, Julius Baer, Rothschild, uh, but I can think of many others. Uh, this is of course a non-exhaustive list. So, Finally, we have 3,500 alumni all around the world. The stat evolved because we graduated uh, 200 more students back in September. Uh, most of them are located in Western Europe. You'll see 30%. And more specifically, in Monaco, we have 25% um, of them working in Monaco. And I would say, actually, a good half of them are probably in finance uh, because that's, uh, I, I would say, for the, the alumni who work in Monaco, that's probably the number one industry. Um, once you become an alumni for IAM, you stay with us for life. Uh, we have a dedicated alumni platform. You stay within the family. Um, you get invited to dedicated alumni events, to all the conferences that we organize. Uh, you get to keep receiving the job and the internship offers that we receive. And, um, and that's, uh, you never get rid of us, basically. <laughs> but anyway, you can get in touch with our alumni. They're super nice and they will be uh, super happy to answer all the questions you may have, just like Eva did today. She's not yet an alumni technically, but she will soon be. Uh, and they will all be super happy to share their experience with you and to give you the, their feedback and their, their feel on how their ear went at IUM. So if you have questions, I'm done, but I am here to answer them. Thank you very much, Marine, for this presentation. Um, I guess that indeed, what is very important, you said something very important regarding the, the alumni and also the current students. So uh, we have a few questions here, but before we start them, I would like to ask Eva, um, why, maybe why she decided to join IUM in the first place and why she, died, she decided to go for the, for the Master in Finance and what, what is her objective. So Eva, if you can tell us a few words about that. Um, basically, to make it short, I decided to join the Master's in Finance at IUM. First of all, because uh, I heard of it because I did the bachelor there but also because as uh, you all mentioned during this presentation, Monaco is a very good place for finance in terms of networking and you're very close to the professionals. And for me, I think it was a very good opportunity also because of uh, the quality of the professors. And uh, I also decided to, because of the international dimension that you have, so you really get a touch from different uh, nationalities. And I think it really, uh, give something extra to the program because you learn a lot from other different people also because of the, what I did during the CFA challenge where there were so many different nationalities and I think it brings a lot and uh, why finance I've always been uh, interested in this field and uh, I think the intensity of the program uh, really gives you a touch of uh, what you can expect in the coming years if you stay in the field. And if, if I can ask an extra one, 
what was your experience now once you became a student what struck you the most uh now you are almost finished with your studies when you look back what will you keep out of that um i would keep uh, everything i learned of course <laughs> all the technicalities and uh, also uh, i've learned many things about myself uh, in terms of uh, working hard and um, in terms of networking and i've uh, i've learned many things about myself also by taking this program because it's quite challenging it's no secret so um yes i think it's only positive thing that uh, maybe when you start the program you get a bit discouraged because it's very hard in the beginning but uh, as you go or you really see the expectations and uh, i think you you learn many things about not only the industry but also about yourself Thank, Thank you. you very much, Eva, for sharing your, your experience. Um, as I said, we have a few questions. So uh, the first question um, would be for Grégory uh, from Yulia. We would like to know if it's possible to join the MSc in Finance course um, with a legal and experienced background. Will the application be considered? Yes, the application indeed would be uh, uh, considered. Uh, in fact, I would say almost every year we have a couple of those uh, such uh, applicants who make it and, uh, and manage to join the, the Masters in Finance, including this year, I think in the, in the current uh, group that's joined us in September, uh, we have at least, uh, I can think of a couple of uh, 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 people with a legal background. Um, what is the most important is not just the background, now, that background you can leverage, yes, you, you can use it to your advantage and it depends what you want to do with it for example typically those who join us um, have, and have a, a legal background want to do something with that level background in the financial industry and they want for that to either shift from the pure legal side into the financial side but for example on the transactional side so MA etc using that legal background uh, to um, uh, better understand structures, acquisition structures, and, and, uh, and other technicalities. And then we have those, who, it's the opposite, they want to stay on, on the legal background, but they want to focus that legal background purely within a, a, a few specific financial sectors. So they want a sort of a technicity, which they otherwise don't have, so which means they don't often understand fully the um, I guess the uh, ins and outs of the situation and and they want to use that masters to get that understanding of the financial uh, I would say mechanism of the financial instruments including complex financial instruments etc so it's possible that doesn't mean it does not uh, require some preparation because of course if you have a pure legal background and you've never uh, done any finance in your life, you will not be able to just join in September and I hope this is going to by miracle work. You are going to have to prepare often to do so a mini prep course, for example, on some of the most fundamental elements in finance to make sure you can from day one benefit from what you would learn in that program. Okay, thank you, Gregory, for the answer. Um, Julia would also like to know if there is an age limit. And I think that uh, for this, Marine, your input would be also valuable because there, there is some limit for the internship to be, uh, to be done. So maybe you can start explaining what are the limits for the internship, and then, Gregory, you can tell us about the experience you had with people sure. with already a certain experience. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so for internships, uh, there is a limit only if you want to intern in Monaco, meaning that um, Monaco has placed an age limit of 27 years old uh, for interns. Um, that doesn't apply, for example, if you never interrupted your studies. Uh, sometimes we can negotiate if you're a career switcher, but you had very little experience. Then it doesn't limit you into finding an internship or a full-time position in another country as well. Um, there are other options as well that you can consider to complete your master degree within the Capstone project, we have four different options. One is of course the internship or a job, 
but it can be an applied research project, so a concrete project, real project, given by a company where you act as a consultant. You have the research thesis, of course, you choose a topic, you write about the topic, blah, blah, blah. And you have the entrepreneurial project, meaning that if you want to start your own business, that is something that you can do as well. So these are the four different options. Then considering the age limit to do the program itself, I, I let Gregory answer uh, this question. For the program itself, um, there's no age limit. In fact, I've had uh, students of all ages, I should say, uh, some of the youngest are probably in the very early 20s, uh, but I've had um, people in the late 50s and even early 60s, sometimes doing a master's in finance. I had in particular an engineer that uh, had invented three different engines uh, and yet wanted to uh, shift to at the very end of his career to a more financial uh, one and manage his own uh, family office and did have, um, uh, the masters in finance uh, to acquire the necessary skills he was lacking. So again, we've had lots of different experience. I've had some extremely successful experience with people also in mid careers or uh, with uh, uh, so late 30s, early 40s even. Uh, I'm thinking about one of our valedictorian, uh, Frank, uh, uh, the golden example, uh, someone who came uh, with a totally different background, but came with a plan, I should say, and it came with a very dedicated mindset and massively successfully not only integrated the program, but you know, went through that program and aced everything and, you know, and afterwards, you know, now continuing in, in his career and et cetera. So we, we do have uh, an experience uh, in integrating very successfully people of all ages. Okay, thank you, thank you again, Marine, for, for the answer. Uh, we have two questions now from Austin. Um, the first one, he, he would like to know whether it is possible to do the Master in Finance in an apprenticeship format. I know it's possible, Gregory, so maybe you can tell us a few words about that, that format. Yes. Um, for the past now couple of years, we have, in fact, uh, opened a new track, which indeed uh, allows the apprenticeship what we call alternance uh, in French. Um, now, this track has a um, couple of characteristics which are um, uh, very specific. First, uh, it's a track where the master's is done over two years. Why? Because um, uh, half of your time is spent you know, working, and the other one spent uh, in class, which also means that you don't get a light masters in finance. So you don't get fewer courses that you would otherwise. So we literally um, deliver the half of the courses the first year and half of the other courses the second year. This is, so it's really, it, it transformed the 60 months for program into a 24 month uh, format. Um, a second characteristics, uh, it has a slightly different focus as well. Um, the specialization that is linked to that uh, format is what we call uh, a corporate banking and services uh, with a bit more focus on specific topics like um, um, middle office, so including risk management, of course, middle office and compliance in particular, uh, because it corresponds to some specific needs and requirements we received from the local uh, industry. Um, so that's why we created that. You have to know that this track though, uh, we have a very limited seat in that track. Typically we select uh, five to eight students maximum per year on that specific track. And we have quite a lot of applicants and there is a priority uh, to locally based students, so those who are either uh, of nationality from Monaco or residents in Monaco have a, a first priority and then the, the ones who are in the immediate vicinity because you get work contract and therefore that program has the same requirement as anybody that would be hired in Monaco. 
Okay, thank you, Grégory. Um, the second question from Mohsin was, uh, it says, having recently graduated from a master's degree in finance in wealth and asset management, I would like to pursue a career in financial analysis and mergers and acquisition. Do you think that uh, your program can bring me a real contribution to my professional projects? Well, I'm not sure which you've developed, but you have to know this is a new trend that we've had now for the past five, six years. Um, we are seeing more and more of our applicants coming with an existing master's degree. So often we have, I would say, probably five to 10% of all applicants uh, come with um, another master's, typically a master's in finance or related economics or uh, econometrics, for example. And either they've had um, an experience which academically was not totally uh, um, fulfilling or at least that did not match uh, all the requirements that they were hoping for. Sometimes it is more the networking part that was missing in, in, their, in their studies. And sometimes a bit of both. Uh, they felt they were lacking things. If you want to really focus on M&A, um, the hedge fund and private equity track allows you to really have a rather strong focus. So in the first term, you have courses like accounting, stock and bond valuation, so the stock valuation part, corporate finance, and then which you continue with private equity, which is a, a course uh, focused on buyout segments, so the, the mature side of the private equity, and which is essentially a deal-related uh, course. Uh, you have so uh, M&A electives, you have venture capital, so very transaction-focused uh, course. So from that perspective, I would say yes. Uh, if from a technical point of view, you feel you have not digested fully uh, the various evaluation method, analysis, um, if you're not, as of today, for example, able to write a full um, a fledged analyst report, then definitely a track like this one would allow you and would contribute technically uh, to uh, that objective that you have. Then, uh, depending on what you would want to focus, most likely afterwards, if it's a pure M&A and you're uh, focusing on top bracket uh, investment banks, of course, you'll have then to focus on doing your either internships or, or aim for the next steps uh, in the major financial centers that where most of the M&A and private equity is happening namely Paris, Frankfurt, uh, London, and these are where they are most happening. Okay, thank you, Gregory. Um, we have a question, a very interesting question from Yvonne uh, regarding the visa, because she would like to know whether she can study the Master of Finance part and work part-time uh, with a student visa in Monaco. So I think that there are two parts in this question one regarding the visa and one regarding the possibility to work and study at the same time. So I will start with, um, with the visa one. Uh, so I don't know where you're from, Yvonne, uh, because the situation is, is different in terms of visa. If you are from the European Union, of course, you don't need to get a visa to come to Monaco. If you are from outside the Union, then you will need to get a visa, of course. There are two types of visa available. Okay, you're from Mexico, so uh, in your case. so. Uh, for the visa, you have two possibilities. Uh, first possibility is that you live in Monaco, and in that case, you will need to ask for a student visa because the university is based in Monaco and you will be a, a Monaco student, so it will be the student type. Uh, now, if you decide to live in France, like most of our students do, then you will have to ask for a long-term visa in France. Um, so basically most of the students live in France because it's much cheaper than Monaco in terms of accommodation, of course. Uh, it's very special because one side of the street is Monaco and the opposite side is France. This is why many of the students uh, live there and they commute every day by bus, by train or even walking, you know. So um, I assume that you will also get into the process with the, uh, the long-term French visa. In any case, don't worry uh, because you will have the possibility to be connected with our student services if you decide to apply and if you decide to enroll. They will be here to help you, to guide you in the process for the visa, to provide you with all the documents. So you will be assisted in, uh, in getting to Monaco. 
Uh, now, when it comes to work and studying at the same time, uh, as you will have a visa, uh, it's not possible because you cannot have a student visa or long-term visa and a working visa at the same time. Visas are not cumulative, actually. So it will not be a possibility. But Gregory, maybe you can tell us a few words about what you think for European students uh, who would like to work and study at the same time because some might be also in that case. Um. I have a, a very particular position on this one. Uh, you have to realize that when you apply to this master, you're committing years to 16 months. But the reality is you're committing to 10 months, rather intensive, focused on your studies. And I've been now, you know, uh, looking at probably something like 15 or 16 years of students doing and, and trying to do that. Um, and I can tell you that in my experience, the general workload of the program is so demanding that it is not easy to have, certainly not to have what I would call a sort of full-time employment. Even a part-time employment may prove a challenge. Um, you will very quickly find that it comes at a cost often, you know, that means you will, you will find yourself sometimes wishing you had more time for your studies, but you'll find yourself, you know, working. Uh, and this is something that can create uh, some uh, serious challenges, I would say, in particular in the first term. Like the first four months are so intensive that uh, you, why would you do that to yourself is, is my question. Is, you know, it's already hard enough knowing that it only lasts 10 months, 10 months goes really fast. Um, and then you start to work potentially right after doing your internship or when not getting a full-time job. We can always consider when you have a full-time position, you know, uh, considering the first six months as your internship. Uh, if you ask me the best internships or full-time positions, but it's a different subject. Um, so um, I've had also, for example, people who had their own business. They were literally the head of their company, having employees, etc. And even for them, I found it was a real challenge to be able to maintain both. In fact, very, very few managed to, I would say, to do that successfully and to make it like a pleasant experience. It often became a, a source of extra, uh, very unnecessary stress at times. So, my advice is if you can dedicate fully yourself for the 10 months of the academic component to studying, you will thank me much more afterwards. That's my advice. Thank you very much, Gregory, for this explanation. Uh, now there is a question regarding enrollment uh, with Anna, who is asking whether there is enrollment in January. So I assume, Anna, that you sell that on the website because for some of our programs, we do have an enrollment in, in January, but not for the master in finance. The reason behind that is that if you start in January, it means that you skip the first semester with all the common core, like the courses uh, of marketing, communication, um, this kind of things. Uh, so it's possible for the ones who have a four year degree for the master in luxury management, for the master in sport business management, and for the master in international management. For the master in finance, there is not uh, such a possibility because you start courses, very technical courses from the very beginning. So you need to take classes from September. There is no possibility to skip any semester. So there is no intake in January. The only possibility is in September. Um, now coming to the number of students enrolled in the program, uh, it pretty much varies from year to year. Uh, this year we have 42 students enrolled in the MSc in finance. Uh, this is actually a top year. Uh, usually we welcome 30 to 40 students in the, in, in the program on average. Uh, so you can consider 35 as a, as a basic uh, average uh, with people from all over the world. So I don't know, maybe Grigori, if you want to add something. About the, the yes, I mean, th this really varies. I mean, it's, it's a question of the quality of the profiles that we have. This year we've had a, a particular uh, big intake. We, we gave uh, uh, the chance to a bit more students than we had in the past. Um, but I would expect, yes, that a, a, a more aligned with what we're trying to do is that 35-ish students is a, is a sweet spot, I would say, for us 
this is what we know uh, how, how to deal with and um, yeah I would expect at least in the coming uh, in the coming uh, September uh, it's about that number I mean you know we, we are going to be around that 35 students number okay um, another question from Kitty would be what criteria do you use for application selection when we have all documents Gregory what are you going to look at mostly um, you can imagine, uh, as we are an academic institution, the very, very first thing we look at is we look at your previous degrees, we look at your transcripts, we'll try to understand from an academic perspective what you've been doing so far um, and how strong you are, basically. Right? That, that's a natural first step. But we combine very, very quickly that first step with another first step, which is to understand who you are, um, what you've been doing outside of, of the studies themselves. If you've had some professional experience, what type of professional experience? If you have not had professional experience before, uh, what has been your path? Uh, um, uh, what countries have you lived in, etc.? Very quickly, if you manage to have the first dimensions, including if you have uh, English proficiency, the right uh, uh, degrees coming from a bachelor degrees um, and a, a right, I would say, mix of experiences and background, then I mean, you're eligible for uh, an interview. And to prepare that interview, we ask you to write a number of essays. Um, now, those essays are not technical essays. Um, they are essays essentially about you, about your motivation, about your general uh, objectives, career objectives in particular. And in, in other words, we're trying to discover the person behind uh, the application. It's absolutely fundamental. The thing that we judge the most uh, at that moment when we, for the application is the quality of those essays, which from my perspective, what does it mean quality essays? These are essays which are personal, they are real. Uh, you are able to show who you are, uh, show why you intend to, to do that program, what, what you would like to do afterwards, how it is coherent. I mean, show us that you've really thought about it and that you've put uh, some serious thoughts into doing a master's in finance, into joining IOM, in being in Monaco, because these are very important choices which make a big difference in your life. So it's fundamental that we understand that. And this is then when you have the interview, also something I'm going to probe. Um, yesterday in, in a different setting, I was asked one question if there was one what was the one major mistake applicants were making? And I, I thought about it, and I think the, the biggest mistakes uh, an applicant can make is not to be themselves, in trying to be a perfect themselves. That's not what we want. We really want the real you. We want to discover you. And when we don't see that, when we feel you're hiding, when we feel that you're trying to present just a facade, yeah, your chances of joining us diminish very, very quickly. So please don't do that. Show yourself. Don't assume they are right answers. Like when we ask, you know, some of the, the answers we, we ask in the essays, for example, is to talk about how people perceive you and how you perceive yourself in terms of strength, weaknesses, you know, things you like about yourself, things you like less about yourself. There are no real um, good answers. But there's one bad answer, that's for sure, is when you start to be scripted, when you're trying to provide what you think is the right answer. You know, so you, you start to say that your biggest uh, flaw is to be excessively attentive to detail. Yeah, well, when, when, when I read that, I know something is going on and that is not helpful. No. So don't do that. That's the one mistake you could be making. Don't do that. Uh, be open. You know, we are here to discover you know, people we would like to integrate. So to do that, we need to see who you are. True, thank you, Gregory. 
Uh, a question from, uh, from Anna, very interesting questions regarding deadlines now. Um, you asking what's the time and deadline for enrollment, Anna. So basically the applications are already open because we opened them one year before the start of the program. So don't hesitate to start your application now. The way it works is that we work on rolling applications, but we also have, uh, I would call them semi-deadlines. Uh, so for, in, for instance, the first deadline that we're going to have will be on December the 31st, uh, meaning that until December the 31st, until the end of the year, basically, uh, if we have two good files, we know that we have enough seats and we will be able to take the two good files to admit all the two of them. Then after that, I would say that until March, uh, the end of March, where is the second deadline, we still have many seats available and uh, you have good chances if you have a good file to be admitted. Then after March, it becomes more difficult because, for instance, if we have two good files, given the limited number of seats, then we will need to choose one. And then even if your file is good, then if you have a better file in front of you, uh, then maybe you will not be admitted. So uh, to put it in a nutshell, let's say that the sooner the better. Of course, you have time to do it, uh, but um, the peak time for us is December, January for receiving application. So if you want to apply, make sure that you send the, your file like, at the very end of this year or beginning of next one. Uh, so this is for uh, enrollment. And now we have a question from Ashu. So this one will be for you, Gregory. Uh, Ashu is asking, is asking us, um, I am a fifth year architecture student in India, and I want to pursue my career in business related to the design industry for instance, uh, real estate industry. So question one is, uh, I am eligible to participate in this program. And question two is, um, is this program suitable for me to help in my business related career? Um, from what I understand, I mean, maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a superficial understanding and excuse me if that's the case. Um, your, I mean, this is a, a really technical program, right? It's very focused in finance. So yes, there is a course in real estate, so which probably would give you the financial side uh, of, of uh, real estate. But to say that in order for you to use your architectural background, you need to have a master's in finance to then just better uh, adjust the, the, your, your skill set to, uh, let's say, um, a real estate is a bit far-fetched. Uh, my, my, I wonder to what extent uh, you are not going to be confronted with many, many other dimensions of finance, which probably are quite unrelated with your goal, basically. So... Again, there are exceptions, but a fair amount of our students who are joining us either wants to integrate the financial industry, wants to set up their business, and therefore want a very strong background in finance to make sure they can set up and leverage that business. And maybe as a third option, they want a, a, a strong financial background uh, because they want to to manage their own operations from a financial perspective, so investing stock and bonds uh, and, and other financial instruments for them from a family office perspective. These are the main three choices. I've had the engineers with uh, uh, architectural background applying. Some have been uh, integrated, um, but again, the shift was from them to leverage that understanding to focus on a few segments like real estate, but they want to uh, take an angle, a more financial angle to it. Um, so I'm not sure if I answer well your question, but uh, from the information I got, uh, I would think about if this master, which is a very focused technical side of finance, is the right one. There may be some uh, either MBAs, if you have a work experience, for example, that may be much more suitable. Uh, and may even allow you to have a, a course on real estate that integrates a course on real estate. Um, or if you don't have that work experience, um, maybe a, a, a master, I'm, I'm thinking about like international management, I mean, 
would uh, probably give you still a number of financial tools to you uh, without necessarily having to focus your entire studies on the technical side of finance. You know, so it depends a bit what you want to do right after and how much technicity you want to integrate. Okay, thank you very much, Grégory. Uh, well, it's, it's time already to, uh, to finish this, uh, this webinar. Maybe before we, we end that, I would like to give the final word to Eva. Uh, maybe Eva, if you, if you can tell our participants uh, tonight, uh, if you had one thing to tell them, maybe in their application process, um, to encourage them or to, uh, a few words to, to give them before, before we finish the, the presentation. Of course, everyone, uh, I highly encourage you, of course, to do this master if you're passionate about finance, if you really want to have a good network, if you really want to test yourself. And uh, for this, I think it's the most suitable program for you. And um, in case you want to have more specific questions, I think uh, Audrey can give you my contact details. If uh, you want to have more specific questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. But uh, yes, don't be afraid and <laughs> if you have hesitations, but uh, it's a very good program in terms of, um, of different um, sets of technicalities, but also people, uh, I think it's very good. Thank you very much, Eva. So thank you very much, Grégory and Marine too, for, for your presentation. I think there's a last question actually, if I'm not uh, mistaken. No, it's just- In the Q&A, if you look in the Q&A, Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, would I be uh, fit for the program even if when I did bachelor's of software engineering in one of the most famous uh, university in Africa, do you allow course suite? Yes, absolutely. We've, we've had uh, some of our students, even last year, for example, uh, one of the top students, uh, that was uh, Eva's colleague, uh, came with a software engineering uh, background. Uh, you still need probably to do a bit of a, a prep uh, financial prep uh, a bit in accounting and other things but we can discuss that more at length uh, but there's absolutely uh, a possibility for you to do those sh uh, shifts absolutely okay thank you so okay no more questions from what i can see so this time uh we are going to close this uh this seminar Thank you very much to our panelists uh, today and thank you uh, to all of attendees for, for being with us. So don't hesitate to contact us, just as Eva said, uh, we would be very happy to answer your questions. Any of us will be available for you. Thank you very much and have a very good day. See you soon. Thank, thank you all. See you.